so, just had the elections wrap up. Uh, some, a lot of people impatient, even though we knew what was coming down the pipeline. We knew that there was a bipartisan effort uh, to, to, to defund the post office. Um, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the mail-in ballots weren't going to be counted until election day. Uh, we knew that Trump was going to interfere. Uh, we knew, we know all this stuff. This stuff was, I mean, none of the, the, so I don't understand why people were like, oh my God, I can't believe it's taking so long. Nevada, get to it. Pennsylvania, get to it. Blah, blah, blah. And then it's, it's also like, hey, uh, you know, these are just fucking people counting these ballots, right? Maybe give them a little bit. You know, these are, these are volunteers. And don't you want like a, like a fair election? Don't you think people should like do what it takes to make it a fair election, to double check, to make sure that the votes are counted properly, to make sure that people's, uh, people's, you know, right to vote is, 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 uh, uh upheld. And other countries take a couple days to fucking tally up their votes. But in America, it's like, we gotta get it all done in a day! If it's not done in a day, then America will explode! It's just like, have a little patience. There's 350 million people in this country. A lot of people are gonna try to vote. It's not like, you know... And, and, and on top of that, then, you know, then you have the Electoral College to deal with as well. Uh, so... Which is just an antiquated system that needs to be taken out. But, uh, they finally got to it, uh, uh right as the weekend <laughs> rolled around, uh, and, and Biden crossed the 270, uh, and, uh, I mean, but it was close, though. A lot of the, I think a lot of the races were close. In Pennsylvania, the big, the big one that everybody was paying attention to was Connor Lamb versus Sean Parnell, uh, and, you know, Parnell is kind of your, he, he's a younger looking dude, uh, you know, veteran, uh, family guy, you know, all the check boxes for being a fucking Republican, he checks them off, uh, but, you know, he, he's not for the ACA, he's not for Medicare for All, he's not for defunding the police, and looking at community initiatives to build a better law enforcement, a better, more precise law enforcement agency uh, that that serves the community rather than being a blunt instrument to use against the community. Uh, you know, he, he's just your classic fucking Republican conservative, and he's backed by Trump. Now, Connor Lamb won, but just barely. I, I mean, I, I feel like it was very similar to uh, Trump and Biden, where it was like one or two points off, and it took a while to get all those counts in, uh, and, you know, for, for candidates that claim that they're that diametrically, uh, opposite, it should mean that there is just a blowout in that term, right? Like, like, if the Democrats keep claiming that they are the party of the people and they are they are the good guys in all of this, and they're you know uh, upholding the rights of uh, all American citizens and all that stuff, then again it should have been a blowout. There shouldn't have been a two percent razor thin margin between any of these fucking candidates. Uh, the reason there was is probably because, and this is purely conjecture on my part, but I would wager to say that, that a lot of people dis were disenfranchised by both parties and uh, felt like they really didn't have a candidate, and they were like, fuck it, I'll just go with the other guy, or I'll go with this other person that, you know, they went against a party that, that they felt like disenfranchised them. There was probably a good chunk of people that did that. Right, because it, the, the Democrats were making the the argument. Well, this is uh, th this is this is a bullshit. We're going up against a fascist, and the other side was like, well, this is bullshit. You're going up against a socialist, which is that part's not true. The fascist part is, but 
so is Joe Biden. I mean, Joe Biden is a crypto fascist versus a outright blatant fascist, right? So, so, so Biden wins, and nothing is fundamentally going to change. He already kind of fucking said that. Uh, and there was all this celebration, and that's cool. Like you can celebrate like, Trump leaving office, but there's not much else to celebrate, right? Like the 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 the, the most bombastic fucking asshole president that uh, uh, that America's ever seen is is leaving office, and that's the only thing that we have to celebrate. Like we didn't celebrate. Uh, we, we, we couldn't celebrate Medicare for All because Biden's not going to bring Medicare for All. We didn't celebrate uh, the defunding the police and moving the civil rights movement forward because Biden doesn't support any of that. He, he's the reason why we have police brutality to the level that we have police brutality. He's the reason why we have mass incarceration to the level that we have it now. So is Kamala Harris. We'll talk about that in a bit. So the needle didn't really move. It's just, oh man... This representation of America uh, that was this fucking overweight, drug-addled, kind of lunatic narcissist is out of office, and now we have uh, a, 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 uh, a dementia patient that kind of says things nicely until you criticize him, and then he gets real shitty and starts spouting things like your old racist grandpa does. Uh, well, I guess that's better? Uh, yay! You can celebrate Trump being out of office, but let's not go crazy. That should have been like... Just fucking having a drink, right? You're just like, fucking A. Uh, <laughs> like what I will do later this evening. Uh, because I locked myself out of the fucking house and, and, and you know running late to the side gig that I'm doing uh, I, I will pour myself a drink and like take a sigh of relief that I'm home after this fucking really shitty thing but that doesn't mean that everything is done I still have a bunch of shit I gotta get done at home and that's the next part about this right everybody was like I know there's work to be done but like let me have this moment and it's like that's fine but this moment can't last four years and that's the big concern that a lot of people on my side have that the progressive socialist lefties have is that this is going to last for four years that it's going to be four years of brunch four years of this is not the time to criticize the democrats Really, what we celebrated, or quote unquote, we what 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 the the staunch Democrats and the big Biden supporters celebrated was you know the victory of a neoliberal Republican rather than a neo-fascist Republican. Yay! We got crypto fascism in the White House, but the Senate and the House still, you know, but, and just barely, too, like, we're, we're, we're fucking fighting a, just barely argument. What does, I mean, the, oh, really, I think this is the epitome of breadcrumbing for the American people from the, from the Democratic Party. Like, this is the Democratic Party basically proving to themselves and to the American people that they don't really have to try worth a damn. Um, you know, like, they just don't have to try. And you can look and go back to, uh, you could probably go back to Daddy Bush and Reagan, right? Like, the, Daddy Bush and Reagan were awful that you had someone that was slightly less awful, Clinton. Bill Clinton was an old charmer, you know, talked real smart, and he had, to, he had that southern drawl, and he was folksy, and people liked him, because he was not this former CIA wannabe strongman that's gonna get us into wars, and do all, you know, uh, and, and do, and lie about all these things, 
to enrich himself and his family and so on and so forth. He's not part of some dynasty, um, you know. So then you got Clinton, and after Clinton, you had Bush. Bush, Bush the kid, right? Uh, Bush the kid it makes him sound like a fucking. I know he'd love this analogy, but it, it makes him sound like an old fucking cowboy, uh, which I guess is kind of apt. <laughs> But you, but and then you know, baby Bush, baby Bush was such a fucking travesty with how with, with 9/11 and starting the Iraq War and the Afghanistan, uh, the war in Afghanistan, the war tour, uh, and he became such a fucking joke and buffoon uh, to basically make America look like a country of buffoons. That the next thing, the next candidate that the Democrats threw up was Barack Obama, who was this young, debonair, first-term senator, right? Ran on this fucking hope and change message. Got a lot of us excited. They were like, look, we're, we're ready to put black people in a leadership position. Yay! And I mean, I was fucking psyched for that shit. I was in college when that was happening, right? And, um... I was very excited about it, and I thought it was it was great, and uh, and he turned out to be an incredible, massive disappointment. And and I mean, every excuse in the book was levied to Obama. Well, he had a Republican Congress. He had an uh, he had a lot of opposition. He was the first black guy. We should cut him some slack. He he's he was a first term senator. He he did his best. He did what he could. Uh, and and. That is all okay to a certain degree, but you can't ignore the, ch- the 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 harm that he did. You can't ignore it. You have to hold him accountable for it. But they didn't because at least he wasn't Baby Bush. At least he wasn't bad as that administration. And then we got Trump, and Trump again carried that same cycle that we've seen for the last 30 years minimum of American politics where the Republicans put basically some uh, 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 what Cornell West calls a neo-fascist gangster uh, and they put him up and he's so fucking terrible on civil rights and he's so terrible uh, on, on all these things and he's bombastic and he makes a fool of himself all the time and, and the whole world looks down upon America and they go what a fucking bunch of buffoons And now, they didn't even, they were just like, what if we just gave him another old guy that's just incrementally, just slightly better, that isn't going to go on national television and tell people to inject themselves with Lysol, that maybe might not make fun of mentally handicapped people on national television. But he still stands for all the wars. He still stands for uh, the the uh, uh, tilted criminal justice system. He still stands for Wall Street and the banking industry. He still stands for the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance companies. That gets just as angry and aggressive when you criticize him as the other guy. But he's just a little bit better. Because he sounds good. He sounds more academic. That's all the Democrats have to do at this point. Nancy Pelosi might just be a little teensy bit better than Mitch McConnell. But hey, she fucking applauded Guan Guaido. And she applauded the coup at... America wanted to to do in in Venezuela that, you know, hilariously backfired. These people, you know, they've just figured out that all they need is someone microscopically better. And the American people will be so terrified and disgusted that they will will take that microscopic breadcrumb and just... And that's kind of what we've been doing in terms of voting. And they make this big hoopla that voting is the biggest and best thing that you can do when in reality it's, 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 it's literally the least thing that you can do to participate in politics at all. 
And then they encourage you not to talk about politics or issues or policy or anything that's going on, uh, you know, amongst your your peers and your family. And part of the way, I mean, we're not fucking educated uh, to talk about that stuff at all, right? Like, most of our education system is about memorization, not about critical thinking. So we don't know how to have these conversations. Like, when you were a kid, you weren't allowed to participate in those conversations. You weren't allowed to... Uh, to, to take part in, in, in intelligent discourse that was left to the adults. But if you watch, I mean, if we were kids and watching the adults do it, it, was, it would probably be embarrassing because the adults were probably just arguing each other and calling each other bastards and cunts anyway. So it would have been a joke. So there, are, there really isn't an example of real political discourse anywhere. So we have to make our own example of real political discourse. And we will. And we will. But if you want electoral change, right? Like if you want the if you want um, our election process to be better, if you want better candidates to be uh, put on these large, you know, bigger political stages, then you're going to need systemic change, or else they're going to keep breadcrumbing us with microscopically incremental better fascists. You're gonna have to fight for systemic change. Start with fighting for more parties. If 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 fucking electoral politics is your bag, then fight for more parties, man. You should be fighting for third parties to get 100% ballot access. You should get. You should be fighting for the Green Party, for the Libertarians, the Constitutional Party, the Movement for a People's Party, all to be getting the same ele- level of ballot access as Democrats and Republicans, as well as getting on the debate stage, as well as getting pu- uh, public funding to get to get on television, to know who these who these people are on a national stage, and get their voice out there and get some recognition. If, if that is not part of your fight and you say that electoral politics and voting is the, is the greatest and best thing you can do for politics, then you're just talking out of your ass and you're, 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 not, you're not doing anything more than, uh, than throwing platitudes out there like the Democrats are. If you're not talking about the Green Party, if you're not talking about the Movement for a People's Party or the Libertarians or whatever it is, or mentioning that third parties, you know, deserve the same level of uh, ballot access, the same level of national recognition as the Democrats and Republicans, then, then you don't really care about real democracy. That's the, I'm, I'm sorry to be harsh about it, but that's the harsh truth about it. This is the time now that we have to that we have to stand behind movements and not parties. That's the reality. It's got to be about movements, not parties. And this is something else that we need to get get used to. Is uh, hey, Trump's not going away. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm sorry if you thought that this was the end of Trump. If if I'm the fucking if if I'm if I I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news about this thing, guys, but. Let's let's really be honest about ourselves here. Do you really think that dude is get like leaving the realm of American politics? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, what's going to happen? And this is already sort of happening. I, I I saw it happen on on Friday before before uh, Biden was even announced the winner. Is uh, Tucker Carlson went on this tirade? about how Biden is going to make everybody drink Starbucks and that's it and everybody has to do the same thing all the time and our freedom of choice is gone because socialism and it's like okay Tucker I know you're an intelligent human being um, you, you might be wrong but I don't think you're dumb um, I think you're a propagandist and I think you're propagandizing what socialism is and then you're equating it with the Democratic Party which is just a neoliberal crypto fascist party anyway so it's not all that different from the party that you worship uh, but it, it, in that sense, fucking, he's going to become the new Rachel Maddow. He's the one that's going to start talking about, uh, you know, fucking election fraud and how the Democrats rigged the, rigged the generals and all this other shit and 
mail-in ballots are going to become the new Russia gay. And I would not be surprised if Trump got a segment on his show um, either semi-weekly or at least, or, or, I mean, every day. I wouldn't be surprised, right? And then I wouldn't be surprised if the other networks wanted to cash in on that. And MSNBC got, you know, Morning Joe gets a, a Trump segment. And fucking Anderson Cooper gets a Trump segment. Where they go on and they and, and Trump gets to keep being this bombastic, narcissistic shit windbag. Blowing hot air. Continuing to galvanize his base. And the corporate media ain't gonna do shit to fucking stop that from happening. Why? Because the corporate media doesn't really care. Uh, to corporate media, they're making money, and they're profiting off of it, and that's all they really care about. They're not a... They're, corporate media isn't about journalism. Corporate media is about entertainment. It's a reality show. Much like American politics is theater, uh, corporate journalism in America is a reality television show. And every so... Every four, four to eight years... We get a new big breakout reality star. Sean Hannity under Obama, uh, Rachel Maddow under Trump, and I'm, and my prediction is Tucker Carlson under Biden. So, that's what's coming up down the pipeline that I think we need to keep an eye out for. Um, you know, what, what, what the, the work that needs to be done is not pushing fucking... Joe Biden to the left it's actually supporting the left Joe Biden's not going to support the left he's already come out and said that he's going to veto Medicare for all he's not going to defund the police he's not going to ban fracking he's going to quote unquote listen to scientists but only to uh, for to put on a mask mandate out there for people which is fine I think that people should be wearing masks right now and I and if you're going to go and sit at a fucking bar or whatever like especially now that's a horrible thing to do but if you're going to go grocery shopping if you're going to visit grandma and so on and so forth wear a fucking mask right be careful be safe out there socially distance do all those things uh and and the unfortunate thing is uh do i think a mask mandate is is a good idea eh, probably not but there's so much opposition and this has become such a political and divisive issue uh and it's now come down to a safety concern that a mask mandate is probably what's needed in order to get people to be like yeah this is what fucking needs to be done to rein this all in and your fr- and, and you know what the coronavirus doesn't give a shit about your fucking freedom anyway so that's what's coming down the pipeline. Um, I did a Twitter thread about the real work that needs to be done. Uh, that's available up on my website. I'm putting up uh, new feature tweets uh, of the week if you want to go look at that. Uh, but it's talking about uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, that the progressive left, uh, the socialist left, really believes in and is fighting for. And, uh, and it's basically shit that you know Joe Biden is not fighting for. And instead of trying to push him to the left, we the people should just be taking on these issues and making them happen in our community. The Black Panthers did it without government support and then influenced the government to take on those things. So uh, we need to do it first and we need to be on the ground floor to do that. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there. Uh, KrishMohanHaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.